Welcome back. It's time for our nightly Q&A. We call it Ask the Doctor. Dr. Ronald Reynoso, the Chief Medical Officer at Adventist Health Bakersfield, is joining us now. And thank you for being here. And good evening, Dr. Reynoso. Good evening. Let's begin tonight with some encouraging news in the treatment of COVID-19. Today, Dr. Anthony Fauci cited a large study of more than 1,000 patients from around the world when he said, quote, data shows remdesivir has a clear-cut significant positive effect in diminishing the time to recovery, adding it is a drug that has proven to block the virus. What does that mean in the broader spectrum of treatment? And is this something we can look forward to using locally? Indeed, those are uh, really good news because we were expecting to hear from those uh, control trials and see if this medication that we knew that was being used for uh, treating COVID was going to be effective. What it means is that we have, we're going to have a, another tool in our arsenal to treat this condition and, you know, and be able to help our patients. So we're very excited to hear that. Dr. Reynoso, uh, some doctors have said that in some cases, younger people in their 30s or 40s with mild symptoms of COVID-19 are suffering debilitating strokes, sometimes even fatal. Your thoughts on why that is happening? Well, we don't have with certainty the, you know, the reasoning behind it, but COVID-19, what we know is that it caused an inflammatory reaction in the body and some of those principles apply when you have uh, such a condition like a stroke uh, obviously caused by a different uh, mechanism but is the inflammation of the vessels of the brain that is probably causing uh, a similar mechanism that produces uh, the, the, the stroke-like uh, symptoms so I mean again there's a lot of uh, a little bit of a speculation in there because we don't have all the mechanism uh, in hand to uh, to compare but this is the principle behind it so isn't that indicative that you know experts in the medical field still haven't got this virus all figured out yet yes I mean it's still uh, a lot to learn from this condition you know how much it affects other organs and how uh, other ways that it will manifest um, you know it's still a novel virus you know we just learned from it the beginning of this year so it's still a lot of unknowns and things to to know as time goes by and we'll be you know understanding how it, the virus work and the implication that it has and on the health of, uh, of our patients yeah. yeah one of the unknowns is really the shelf life of this virus when it's out in the environment we have a viewer question uh, from Michelle uh, she notes that the weather is heating up. We all know that, but she uh, she wants to know when the temperature is above 85 degrees. How long does this virus live while it's suspended in the air? You know that's a, uh, a good question. I don't have a definitive answer, but we know that the higher the temperature, uh, it kills. Uh, you know the majority of, of the virus that uh, are there. Higher temperature, especially the ones that we experience here in Bakersfield. Uh, will be helpful to eliminate the virus. But, uh, you know, uh, to say specifically if at 85 degrees will be enough to, to kill it is still it's a little bit of an unknown, uh, you know, for us. And, Doctor, uh, we have uh, time for just one more question. How long can the virus survive on surfaces? I know I speak for a lot of people when you, we've seen so many different reports. One chart from WebMD says it can live on some areas like metal and glass for up to five days. But at the same time, I also recently read you don't need to wipe down packages that come into your home quite as thoroughly. What is the bottom line there when it comes to time on surfaces and how, I guess, uh, thorough you should be? <clears throat> yes, you know, uh, what we have learned, we have learned from the, the virus is that it, it depends on the different surfaces, it stayed longer. Uh, metal and some plastic seems to be the ones that uh, keep the virus alive the longest, but it's still there's uh, some uh, debate and correlation on if, you know, if, if whatever the virus is on the surface is enough to, to infect you and, and cause the same harm you, as you, as you, to, you breed the 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 virus when you're exposed to another page, uh, another person. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, still a little bit of unknown on, on that regard of how long this virus is going to uh, live and how uh, effective it is depending on the surface that you touch. Yeah. Uh, it's always good to have precautionary measures and, you know, clean uh, the things that you are 
in contact and specifically washing your hands when you're in contact with any surface or anything that is uh, outside of your house. Uh, so that, I think that's the best advice that we can that we can give. Always clean your hands, uh, you know, soap and water or use a hand sanitizer if soap and water are not available. All right. Well, Dr. Reno, so we want to thank you so much for your time and your insights tonight. Thank we you, certainly appreciate it. And we'll check back with you tomorrow night.